Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. December 19, 2019, the Trump impeached edition. First up, from the Wall Street Journal, Risk and Compliance Journal, the United Kingdom is proposing far-reaching changes to its audit sector amid concerns of conflict of interest, the quality of audit, and the structure of the industry. In a 135-page report issued by Donald Bryden, the chairman, uh, former chairman of uh, several UK companies, it recommended redefining audit as a tool providing confidence in a company and its financial statements and calls for separation of the audit profession from the accounting profession. The report came after a series of high-profile corporate collapses in Britain, which have led to worries about the accuracy of companies' legal statements. It is expected to serve as the basis of the government's actions that it may take in 2020. Uh, Next up, also from the Wall Street Journal, COSO has issued guidance regarding Uh, a blueprint for companies to strengthen their oversight of security, uh, uh, rather cybersecurity. Among the uh, voluntary guidelines is companies should establish a cyber risk management team that is led by the chief information officer. The company should include executives overseeing risk, finance, audit, compliance, and other areas. Companies should also consider setting minimum credentialing requirements for information technology executives and adding directors with cybersecurity expertise to their board of directors. Next up, we move to uh, executives behaving badly. And we start off from the world of football and a story in Sports Illustrated or SI.com. The Jacksonville Jaguars fired their executive vice president of football operations, Tom Coughlin, um, today. Uh, and Coughlin was fired days after the NFL Players Association released just a scathing statement criticizing the team for fining players for not going to team-mandated rehabilitation or treatments, uh, which were um, not required of the players. Um, the, uh, I read the report. It simply was just uh, scathing. They were uh, uh, One player was fined over $700,000. He uh, did get that money back in arbitration, but it really speaks to an entire culture of uh, really unethical behavior at Jacksonville. Um, and if you follow football at all, you know that the firm, or the, rather the, <coughs> the um, team, has just uh, fallen into the abyss after their uh, NAFC championship game lost to the Patriots a couple of weeks ago. And finally, um, along the lines of uh, CEOs who did behave very badly, uh, Bernie Ebers at WorldCom X, WorldCom CEO, is back in the news as he was granted early release from prison. Uh, the judge granted the family's the 78-year-old's request for release after 13 years in what was the world's greatest fraud. He was serving a 25-year sentence for participating in one of the largest accounting frauds ever at the time. It was the world's largest accounting frauds. Um, he was released due to time served and health conditions, including blindness, weight loss, mental and physical de- decline. Prosecutors had fought this, but uh, the uh, family was able to persuade the judge uh, to have Ebers release. If you remember the WorldCom fraud and Ebers' role in it, you know it was uh, immediately after Enron and, and just devastated the investing community. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Thanks so much for listening.